as a real computer scientist, I'm not allowed to work with Windows, so <laughs> I brought my own laptop. Yeah. Well, now, um, seems like I have a confession to make. Uh, I'm working on replacing you on your job. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, my software, my new AI, is going to replace you. AI is just nerd speak for artificial intelligence, which is just nerd speak for making computers smart. So it's me, which is at 3 a.m. behind his computer, working on the next Terminator. Yeah, at least most of the time I'm just dreaming about it, because the, in the current state of AI, it's more about making computers look smart. <laughs> it's really all we can do, but I'm dreaming about it, so let's dream. What if I took all the AI software available in all of the world and put it on one computer? What could that computer do to me, for me? Well, it could tell me the way to Tokyo down to the centimeter. But if I showed it a picture of my pet, it couldn't tell me if I had a cat or a dog. So what's going on here? Pe some com uh, computers are so good in some tasks and so bad at others. It seems like that there's no general playing field for them. It reminds me a bit of my nephew Arnold. When Arnold was born, my uncle said, I'm gonna put Arnold on the map. I'm gonna make him the next grandmaster of chess. So I went to primary education, and uh, I learned about shapes, I learned to count, I learned a bit of, about everything. Arnold, well, he learned the rules of chess. I went to secondary education. I learned about maths, about geography. I learned about everything. Arnold just mastered chess. So after my education, <laughs> I wasn't particularly good at anything. For every task, somebody needs to explain me how to do it, but I couldn't do everything a bit. Arnold can just do one thing. And now you're probably thinking your uncle has a very bad parent. I say yes to, but yeah. It's how we treat our computers nowadays. Like in the 90s, people said to the best computer scientist, you will never beat us at chess. And so the computer say, scientist went, ah, let's see about that. And in 1997, they beat the best chess players in the world with a computer. Relevance for, SAS, for society, about zero. And after that, did they go on and do something useful? Well, not really. They went down to the game Go. In the, go, in the game Go, you can get more configurations than there are atoms in the universe. Almost many, many too. But it took until this year until a computer could manage to win from the best Euro European players. Still not very useful. So what should these people actually be doing? Well, give this computer primary education. Let's give them something to reason, some reason abilities. So uh, we observed with our research group that actually most of the things in the world work according to a set of rules. So if we teach a computer to reason about a set of rules, about the laws, then a computer can do much more. Instead, and now we just have to give him every instruction. We just want to give him a set of rules he has to reason about. So it doesn't matter if it is the set of rules of Go, or if it is the set of rules for making your schedule for your courses, or if it is a set of rules how you fill in your text form, if, you just, if a computer could reason, we could just give it the text regulations and the computer would be able to fill in your text form. So I have a working example here. I have here, I have oh, a map of Europe. And in this map of Europe, you can clearly see every country. 
every country, you can clearly see it, because every adjacent country has a different color. So, how could a computer come up with such a map? Well, here I have a very badly colored map. Everything is blue. You can't clearly see every country. So, so I speak maths to the computer. And one of my jobs is to, give, to invent a better language to communicate with the computer, but even now, it's a language most of you, uh, all of you will understand if I read it aloud. I just say, every two countries, C1 and C2 are two countries, which have a border, so there, there's a border between those countries. For those two, the color of the first country should be different from the color of the second country. And that's just a rule. I didn't tell the computer how to find this map, and I can just press run, and voila, the map is colored exactly as I wanted it to. And you can say, well, most, you can write a computer program for that. But the powerful thing for, of this is, when the rules change, the computer is already with you with it for the second problem. For example, blue is very special for me. Um, I only want one country in blue. Well, I can just say, there has to exist exactly one country for which the color is blue. I read, I read the sentence aloud, but this is real maths, and the computer can understand me. I find a new coloring, and indeed, <laughs> only Russia, Russia is blue. So you can see how, how I can interact with the computer just according to a set of rules, I don't, I don't need to do real programming anymore. So imagine that everything in the world can, if, if, if everything in the world, world is specified in this kind of rules and our AIs are so advanced that we can do, just give, give this the rules. Then a computer could play Go and solve your, solve your scheduling of your courses or fill in your text form with the same effort. So, I want to say to you, if you want the Terminator to fill in your text form, you better send Arnold to primary education first. <laughs> I'll be back! <laughs> <laughs>